Let's cue the intro. Here's a good opportunity for a shout out to Fouch Family Off Grid. I saw their Hornet Trap video the day after I was stung up pretty good. As Nick says, they didn't invent this type of trap, but you know, we really enjoy their channel and have been following since the beginning. Fouchland is a great place to be. A link to their video is in the description. My trap is like theirs, but with some minor modifications. The other day I was out here working on the gate project. I was crouched down low behind one of the posts. Had a drill going, nice uh, high-pitched whine. Anyway, so I couldn't hear anything. All of a sudden, wham, 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 wham. I'm getting hit by these uh, wasps. That was incredible. It, they just bang, bang, bang. On the back of the head, I got like uh, three stings on the back of the head immediately, just bang, bang, bang. And on my arm, they were like, just, uh, I've never seen wasps so aggressive. I mean, they started shooting down into my shirt and stinging me. And I went to, <laughs> I tried to get up quickly and went stumbling down the hill, uh, make it over to the pole barn, trying to sweep these things off of me. Um, God, they were just really aggressive, really aggressive. Um, got into the pole barn. Some of them were, there was still a, a cloud that followed me down that way and slipped in there. Still, I don't know, half a dozen of them or so still were in there attacking me, but at least could, uh, could nail those. But uh, yeah, it's quite amazing. I ended up with uh, about eight bites. And uh, I tend to be allergic to them, so I got a little anaphylactic shock even with the, uh, you know, the, the breathing being labored a bit. Uh, so, yeah, I got to watch out for that. I took some antihistamine right away and yeah, it cleared up. But uh, then I came out here to take care of the issue. <laughs> um, so as I came out here the next time and I was looking around and I saw a couple of wasps and uh, then started tracking where they went to. So I found I was working over there, that uh, main post where the hinge is. And here was the nest right here where that rock is. So I came out the next day with some uh, cans of spray, a little more covered up than I was the first day. And uh, started, first I squirted some bug spray some wasp spray down in the hole and then covered it over with a rock and then as the I don't know the workers came back um, there was a lot of them I probably killed about a hundred of them with spray until I kind of dwindled down their numbers uh, then I had the my digging not much call it digging rod a uh, pike what I tend to call it so I had a long steel pike kick the rock away punch this thing down into the hole and uh, I thought there was about a seemed like about a 10 inch cavity down there as I saw as I punched this thing down in there punched a few holes into the this whole nest area and as I pulled the pike out these things were coming up it was like a yellow volcano coming out through it and uh, luckily I was able to get the spray and boom get it on them just soak that thing down then covered it over with another rock here's the trap build Partial construction on the wasp trap. Here's the uh, base box for some of the other pieces cut. And show you those as they go together. Um, has to be a place to fill it with, so there's a piece here. All this is just scrap wood I had laying around. So I've uh, just uh, glued it up. Do some brad nails on it. Uh, used it up with uh, PL, glued it up with PL. Loctite Premium. It's a favorite, favorite construction adhesive. Loctite Proline. Really is strong. The wood will break apart usually first. I have a little screen out here. 
mark the height where I wanted it, be sure I had enough room, and uh, the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. So anyway, and uh, just put a pencil in the end of this, and I got the line where I wanted it, and just jink, 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 and made a pencil line over here. So you can make it out. So we'll cut it, fit it. Okay, here we have the Keats sheet with a cone. So cut out the cone and just kind of stitched up along the uh, edge with the seam. Just don't really want to show that side, it's a little crude. But it'll hold together with a stained box. Should be noticed that the uh, dimensions of this, it's about uh, 14 by 14. And the center sections are three quarter inch ply. The uh, bottom and top are five sixteenths maybe. Anyway, I, I would have made them a little thicker, but I just didn't happen to have plywood like that laying around, so I used the quarter. Should be fine, but it could warp over time. Uh, up about a half an inch would probably be best. Yeah, let's see what else. The holes here are seven eighths diameter. I want to be sure that they uh, don't feel constricted going in or out. Well, going in. I want to be sure they don't feel constricted going in. I want them to be very constricted trying to get out. Only one way. Oh, the uh, bucket that goes over it is about 12 inches diameter on the largest end. And here's the open, the side piece that opens up the hatch. And here's the sliders for closing the vents. I'll let it uh, dry overnight. Get it assembled tomorrow. Start keeling some hornets. Okay, so we got this top piece uh, secured on there. Both sides. Now with this thing bent tight, see how it actually holds. See, so we got the two slots lined up, so there's use. I have an eyelid in it so we can pull on it with a stick or something. So it lets them in. Okay, so I actually did decide to put a rail on the bottom. Yeah, they say what, an ounce of prevention uh, prevents a pound full of wasp ointment? Oh, something like that. Anyway, if you were walking along thinking it was closed, you would close it off and you were walking somewhere else with this thing full of wasps and this happened to get bumped and fell out. Well, that could be bad. Not necessarily they'd find their way out because they would be in the top chamber, but yeah, let's just uh, keep it secure. Okay, now for the little hatch door, the, the feeding door. Just wanted to note the uh, hinge detail here in the feed door. Yeah, kind of an unusual sort of hinge. Okay, here's a type of screw. Now you notice the top of it doesn't have threads in the top quarter inch portion. That's the portion that goes through here. So you can drill this out to approximate the diameter of the top of that screw and then it actually threads into the wood block so it stays attached to the, to the door but it moves in the other part of the hinge. So and that especially works well if this has a metal that it's riding on for a bearing on the top. So. Very simple, very easy. And the, uh, the obviously the end of this has been radiused all the way around. Could do that when you're carrying it, it could pop open, so uh, then you may want to have it tightened up. We're going to replace this uh, screw here with a pin. So I've already drilled the hole at the top. Okay, okay, so that latches in, and you insert the little pin. It'll keep it from going anywhere. Much easier to unlock, so to speak. Okay, we're going to drill a couple of holes in the bucket on opposite sides. Uh, I'm not going to put it on the side where the handle comes down, so let's put it underneath the handle. Just one on each side. And 
Yeah, it looks about right. About uh, a little over halfway up on the bucket. Okay, two holes will Okay, now we're gonna cover up these holes with a little screen material. I'm just using plastic screen. And I'm just gonna use some uh, duct tape. And remember, duct tape is not for use on ducts. If you wanna fix duct work, you use metal tape. Anyway, duct tape. Yes, I was always running with scissors. I apologize. Okay, first piece on there. Approximately where I want it. Sweet. Okay, there's our air hole on the side. Do the same on the other side. A little glue and screw action. So I've already drilled some holes right through these centers here. And I already test fit it, so now I'll get some caulking on here. Oh, you know what you really want is in the inner edge. You want to be sure they don't get in between there and there. Yeah, that's the bigger deal. Okay, yeah. Now, well, just looking at this, you can imagine that uh, the wasps will be in this area here, and you want to be sure they can't, even though the cone's pretty much covering up, you want to be sure they can't get in between here and the wooden box. It would just be messier to clean later. And I want to think about which way I want the handle. The handle going off to that side. Use some, uh, you know, large head screws. These are only three quarters of an inch. They're called self piercing lav screws. Now, I'll finish them up by hand. Okay, so that's what we look like on the inside. Ring, I uh, took and marked it. Just found another uh, bucket that had a small diameter. Marked it, cut it with a uh, box cutter. Snap it in place. Originally, I was going to glue a lid on here. And I realized, you know, if I have, when I have to clean the bucket out, uh, I have to make that convenient. So, it'd be nice to be able to snap this off. Um, and then I thought about putting a screen up here. That would be really easy to attach. Problem with the screen is if you're sometime where it was raining, sprinkling, whatever, you're gonna get it's gonna get really mucky down there. Wouldn't want that. So I wanted some uh, clear plastic. So I'm just gonna do that, drill through that, and screw it on. Okay, so here we are with the uh, top screwed on. Uh, four screws is really enough. There's uh, when you lift it, it's not carrying it by the lid. That's only holding it down. Be sure it seals well. You don't want things uh, flying up out of here. Um, you know, when you install the top, I had to have a handle up just to uh, keep it up on top. And once this little latch thing sets on the door, 
we'll be done. Uh, got the little eyelets here. So you can use like a stick, push on this or pull on it with a little hook thing that you can, you know, push them, pull them. So you close it, keep them from going out, or you can reactivate it. And we're basically good to go here. Okay, this uh, Hornet Habitat. Waspinator, uh, I don't know, you can call it any wonder, any number of things. Uh, so it's completed, other than filling it up with food. So, brief uh, walkthrough. Here's where the wasps, uh, hornets would enter. I primarily have it here for the kind of uh, hornets that make their nests in the ground. So, this is the entry, and you can slide it to where you can block it off. So, for example, you know, you want to move this to a new location, you already have wasps in it. You can, well, you could, if there's no activity, you could come down and just slide it. Or you could use a stick. Have the same on the opposite side. Same exact thing. You see this just held by these two metal brackets. Makes a nice, easy slider mechanism. Very simple. And for filling it, you just open that up and fill it. See the uh, crude little cone in there? Made out of metal screen. Uh, seam down the side with a small hole up at the top. Enough for the wasp to get through, come up into the upper chamber. Upper chamber brings in a lot of light. So that's it. Simple, simple, simple. I'll uh, build a second one. It's two, two, two death traps in one. It's the Hostile Hornet Hospice. Okay, so both of them are ready. Uh, I need to go pick up some bait today. We don't have any meat laying around the place or any dead carcasses to put in there. And apparently that's what the what these hornets like this time of year. They want some protein. They want some meat. They want some meat. So I'm gonna have to get some meat to put in there. Now let's bait this trap. Just like a Super Bowl party, they want meat and sweet. Apparently in the uh, springtime, they want more sweet stuff. And middle of summer, they want more meat, more protein. I see them growing after my grapes in the middle of the summer. They seem more uh, attuned right now to the grapes than they are to the meat part, but uh, I'm gonna give them a little bit of both. Get a good surface area so that it's nice and smelly. And we'll slice up a few grapes here. Get a real buffet going. There we go. Nice and stinky. Make it stinky. I guess that's good for the Super Bowl party too, huh? Sand that down a little bit. Helps you take your previous bait out. It tends to dry rather quickly after a day or two. Usually after a day in the summertime. Yeah, that's tight enough. Don't need the pen, but don't want to lose it either. Now let's not keep those hornets waiting. You now it's been about an hour. Quite a few residents. You know, I did take in the shoot some poison in there. I wanted to see how much it would take and uh, to nail some of them. So, uh, there's the uh, hatch in the side. I'm not so sure that these openings here are a good idea because uh, what I found was that the other wasp, some wasp would come and get food, they'd come up here. Now certainly the smell is probably rising from this. It's coming out of these vents. So obviously the uh, fumes would be fumes. The uh, scent of the meat would be coming out of here. So they tend to come right to here first and there's other wasps here and they have some of the meat on them they're carrying around. So the others come up and there and they tend not to find the holes then. So when I covered the holes up, they see more of the scent is coming from down in the bait holes. It seems they were finding the bait holes better when I did that. So I've covered both of these up temporarily. I'm just kind of testing that. 
Yeah, I think we got about two dozen in this trap. Now, it's interesting too, as I watched them, I'd find them coming up through the cone, I'd find them going up and down this cone. They come up to the top of the cone, and, I, I, and not once did I see any of them turn around and go down the hole. They're always looking to go up. So they'd come up around, all around that hole, but they never go down the hole. Yeah, this one's just getting less traffic here. I did cover up both the uh, holes in it. There's a couple starting to head in. Oh, he just let me kill him. Oh, goes right in. How long it takes him to make it out to the top up here? Oh, there he comes. Well, it took him close to a minute to eat his food and uh, come on up to the top. Okay, I'm going in for a wasp attack. <laughs> I can't really film it because I'm going to be really kind of precarious, but uh, I've got a couple things of... Got a couple things of wasp spray in my hands and a rock, so I try to get over that nest, really uh, spray it in there good and uh, cover it up with a rock before they get too active today. So I've got a thicker shirt on, I'll put this helmet on with the visor down, hopefully they won't fly up in here, get the uh, collar up and uh, we'll see, hopefully we can get in there without getting stung. Yeah, I wish I could film it, but uh, it's life. Okay, the wasps have come back. <laughs> I did spray the nest, you see that? Put the rock over the top. They're not perceiving me as a threat. I'm not moving, or maybe because it's cold out. Check the uh, trap here. Got a few dozen of them in there, so probably depleted their numbers. RH here. Off to more projects. Hasta la projecto.